Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community. And I'd like to also remember my friend Kevin Burns and his family, whose father George Burns passed away this week, and to remember my cousin Ann Jeannie Riley, who died Thursday. Our hearts are pr and prayers are with her and her sister Catherine and all who love Jeannie. Call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third Order 3A. Minutes of the regular meeting of the Scranton Housing Authority held September 9, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority's 2012 Annual Report, received October 13, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Tax Assessor's Report, hearing date held September 25, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Audit Status Report from Robert Rossi and Company, received October 11th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, applications along with decisions rendered by the Zoning Hearing Board on October 9th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I have a few. Um, the first one is you're invited to help, ser help those who served us. Please join the volunteers of Catholic Social Services, St. Francis of Assisi Kitchen, Scranton Chapter of Unico, National and La Festa Italiana of Lackawanna County as they gather for a great night of entertainment to raise funds for the Homeless Veterans um, Project that's currently um, in the works in Scranton. This event will be $35 per person on Saturday, November 9th at Janetti Manor in Dixon City. And the feature entertainment will be the poets. And again, that's um, for homeless veterans. Um, two other announcements. Um, second, the Dante Literary Society will be having their fall dinner on October 26th from 4.30 to 7.00. Uh, 4.30 at night to 7 o'clock at night at the Dante Club, located at 1916 Prospect. Um, the pasta dinners are $11, and takeouts are also available. And finally, on Sunday, October 27th, from 3 to 6 p.m., the South Scranton Neighborhood Watch is having a safe Halloween event. Um, it's at Connors Park, 500 Orchard Street, and uh, it's for kids. It's a free Halloween bash and costume parade. And there's a, there is information on this on Facebook as well, which is where it was sent to me. And that's all. Anyone else? St. Joseph's Melkite Catholic Church, located at 130 North St. Francis Cabrini Avenue in West Scranton, will hold its annual spaghetti dinner fundraiser this coming Wednesday, October 23rd, from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. Takeout dinners will be available beginning at 4 p.m. Each dinner consists of salad, bread, spaghetti, meatballs, dessert, and coffee. Adult tickets are $8.50 each. 
Tickets for children age 10 and younger are $4 each. Tickets may be purchased at the door. Also, Johnson College will be holding a neighborhood meeting on Wednesday, October 23rd, 2013 at 10 a.m. in Richmond Hall, Classroom 200. Uh, it is a meeting among the school, the city of Scranton, the Scranton Sewer Authority, and the residents of the streets affected in that area by water runoff. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker this evening is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Just like to uh, begin this evening, uh, some of the comments uh, last week. We had a lot of discussion on uh, Pell's letter, and uh, obviously we, we are uh, well aware that the city is going to uh, quite frankly fall short in, in, in some of the uh, revenue enhancements that uh, were part of the recovery plan and obviously implemented in the uh, 2013 operating budget. Um, unfortunately, uh, some of those, such as uh, pilots and uh, some of the other uh, revenue enhancements that were included, um, we understand uh, we will fall short and, and are hopeful that moving forward um, we can be more successful uh, in those areas. However, I, you know, I, I do have to take issue with, uh, you know, and, I, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but I do have to take issue with uh, a lot of the statements made by Councilman Rogan last week. And you know, when I sat back and listened to uh, you know, this, this idea of you know, kind of like, you know, ha-ha, I told you so, um, you know, I, 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 I was somewhat insulted by that. And I, I, I sort of uh, had some sympathy for his colleagues on council because I know a lot of the, the hard work and the research that you put into a lot of these ideas. And at the time, if, if you paid attention, even discussing some of these revenue enhancements at last summer, we knew that some of these were gambles. But when you're a city on life support and you face the decision of whether or not to pull the plug and basically give up and file for bankruptcy or take some chances, you take some chances. Um, the position that this city currently is in, as I said, no idea at this time is a bad idea. The city had a lot of obligations. And so at certain times, you have to take a risk. And so I, I think it's somewhat insulting, and it discredits the, the time and effort that Mrs. Evans and you know, Mr. Joyce and Mr. Lascom um, put into uh, this process. And you know, this, this, you know, I told you so, and that's why I, I voted against the recovery plan and I voted against the budget, um, again, leads me back to if there were certain portions of that plan that, that you didn't support or you didn't feel were, were, uh, were necessary and were in the best interest of the city, um, that's when I believe you know, leadership takes a place and, and you, you step up to a leadership role and you offer alternatives. And, and, and that never happened. And so I think it's, it's quite hypocritical to make those statements and it's unfair to make those statements. Um, I, I can only hope that moving forward, um, we sort of uh, have an attitude adjustment and we move away from the, you know, ha ha, I told you so and that's why I went against it. Um, that, that's not what leadership's about. Leadership is about ideas, vision, creativity. And when you're in the city's position, it's about taking chances. And again, you took some chances. Unfortunately, some things didn't come through all the way. Um, but a lot of good things have happened. And we can only hope that we continue to pursue the things that we went after and hope that we do realize those things and that hopefully with the new administration coming in, uh, whoever that is, um, that there will be some more cooperation and there, there will be some more dialogue and willingness to uh, you know, follow through on some of the things that, that council uh, puts, in, puts into place. But um, again, I, I don't think there's, uh, there's a need for that. Uh, on to the, uh, the garbage fee issue. Obviously, by now, everyone was uh, well aware of the fact that on Monday there was, I believe, 15 pages or so in the Scranton Times of, of delinquent uh, individuals who have yet to uh, pay the $178 uh, dollar garbage fee. And uh, I, I know there's a lot of mixed feelings on, on this issue, and um, you know, we had some discussion on that last week. And uh, you know, I, my feelings on it are that I, I certainly feel the taxpayers obviously have an obligation to fulfill paying their taxes and fees. But at the same time, 
I think that I, I kind of hold the city's feet to the fire more than I do the taxpayer because at the end of the day, the city has an obligation to ensure that these fees are being collected. And to let nearly $7.8 million go uncollected, I think, is inexcusable. And it says a lot about the, the ongoing mismanagement of the city by this administration. And now that the city is in a pinch for some cash, now we're running around, you know, publishing names in the paper and, you know, running around doing everything we, we can to collect this money. Whereas if we did it right the first place, in the first place, we wouldn't be in this situation. You know, it all goes back to doing it right the first time. And that seems to be the, uh, the history of this administration when, you know, when we look back on it, just the mismanagement and, and letting things go. And, uh, you know, I, I do think moving forward, we, we do need to take a look at a more efficient plan. Um, going back to Mr. Rogan, I, him and I don't uh, see eye to eye on a lot, uh, but I do have to uh, agree with him last week that perhaps, uh, you know, the idea of maybe looking at a per, uh, per bag uh, collection may be something to look at. As long as, and let me make it clear, as long as it uh, does not, uh, you know, revolve a privatization, that's something I do not support. But I do think that you know, utilizing the DPW and the staff and our assets we have, that maybe this is something we can look at. I have discussed it with uh, an elected official who actually serves on the Old Forge Borough Council who informed me that this is what they do, this is their procedure. Um, it's a $2 sticker that is put on each bag each week. And again, you alleviate having the burden put on a lot of seniors and those who may not have as much to put out each week. So it's definitely something that I would think we should look at as long as it doesn't mean that we have to uh, you know, look at a privatization because I do not support that. I think we can utilize the assets we have and, and, and maybe uh, take a look at something uh, along this avenue and, and avoid having to go back from years and years and, uh, you know, trying to collect fees that should have been, been collected at that point in time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to add briefly uh, to the comments made by Mr. Miller regarding the delinquent garbage fee collections. I absolutely agree that this is something that should have occurred years ago. I believe the, the years that were being currently collected are 2002 through 2012. Um, previously, the city employed NCC as its collection, collection agency, and apparently they did not do a very good job. And as a result, we were able to successfully replace them with Northeast Revenue Service. And at the time, I know uh, Solicitor Hughes and Mrs. Craik and myself and Councilman Joyce negotiated a contract with them. And uh, we have found them to be very transparent, highly accountable, and very successful in bringing in much needed revenue to the city. And like Mr. Miller said, that's the type of company that should have been on board many years ago. Not just, um, you know, since, since this council came on board and held the mayor's feet to the fire to get someone who can do the job. It really should have been done long, long, long before that. Um, our next speaker is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Gerard Hetman from Lackawanna County's Community Relations Department. To begin this evening, as many of you may be aware, the Lackawanna County Commissioners earlier this week released their tentative 2014 General Fund Operating Budget for public review. I would like to share a couple of informational items and budget highlights from our 2014 budget message with Council this evening. To begin, in 2014, the Lackawanna County Administration will continue to follow a conservative fiscal policy, which includes demonstrating fiscal responsibility, restraint, and management while facing the county's financial challenges. Some important features of the budget are as follows. First, in 2014, the general fund budget includes no tax increases. And again, just to repeat that to be clear, the tentative 2014 Lackawanna County general fund budget includes no tax increases. 
Second, factors that impacted the 2014 budget included additional federal and state staffing mandates at the county prison and the continuing challenge of escalating personnel costs. Third, the county is reviewing its, renewing its commitment to economic development in the 2014 budget. Beginning in 2013, the county introduced programs such as the SBA Loan Fee Waiver Program, the Community Reinvestment Grant Program, the Bioscience Initiative, and the Construction Permit Fee Waiver Program, all of which were intended to encourage the creation of private sector, family sustaining jobs while stimulating economic growth in Lackawanna County. 2014 budget renews funding for these programs. Fifth, uh, the 2014 budget also provides resources for a potential annual surveillance fee imposed by a bond insurer. In 2005, as a condition of past borrowings, a surveillance fee was implemented by a bond insurance company in the event of a lapse in the county's investment grade rating. This fee will be assessed until we are able to restore our investment grade rating. By completing its 2011 and 2012 financial audits in a timely fashion under the terms of its bond indentures, the county has generated a modest operating surplus during 2012 and an accumulated fund balance as of December 31, 2012. The county anticipates another modest surplus during 2013 and 2014. This is viewed positively in the eyes of the rating agencies. However, the estimate for 2014 is not guaranteed because of unexpected expenses that may arise during the upcoming budget cycle. Moving forward in the budget process, the Lackawanna County Commissioners have scheduled a series of hearings on the proposed 2014 budget to allow county residents to ask questions and provide input to the county commissioners and our budget staff in the upcoming days. There are four hearings with the dates, times, and locations as follows. Friday, October 18th, 1 p.m. at the Commissioner's Conference Room on the sixth floor of the County Administration Building, 200 Adams Avenue in Scranton. Friday, October 18th, 3 p.m. at the Archibald Borough Building, 400 Church Street in Archibald. And then the second two are next Tuesday, October 22nd, 4.30 p.m. at the Dunmore Community Center on Monroe Avenue in Dunmore. And then lastly, Tuesday, October 22nd, 7 p.m. at the Greenfield Township Municipal Building, 424 State Route 106 in Greenfield Township. All county residents are welcomed and encouraged to attend the hearings and give their input to the county commissioners on the budget process. And then just two other items that we have from different departments. Uh, first, the Lackawanna County Voter Registration Office is still seeking poll workers for a number of polling locations in the upcoming municipal election, uh, including several that are located within the city of Scranton. Anyone interested in working the polls can contact Beth Hopkins at the Voter Registration Office at 570-963-6737. And lastly, the Scranton Police Department, along with the Pennsylvania State Police Troop R at Dunmore, will participate in the National Take Back Initiative prescription and, for prescription and non-prescription drugs. Uh, the event is, next, is Saturday, October 26th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, in both of those locations, the Scranton Police Headquarters on South Washington, as well as the Pennsylvania State Police Barracks in Dunmore. Um, anyone can drop off any prescription or non-prescription pharmaceuticals that they may have laying around their house. Uh, there's no cost, no questions will be asked, and it's a good chance for anyone uh, in the city or the area to dispose of those in a safe, environmentally friendly manner. Uh, that's all we have this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hetman, before, yes, um, before you leave, um, last year, and as it's been stated by numerous people, there's, there's no question that taxes in the city of Scranton are going to increase next year. Last year, when the taxes in the city were increased, City Council requested that the county commissioners extend the discount period okay. for residents of, of the entire county and specifically of Scranton. Yes. Would you be able to, if with my colleagues' agreement, I know we all did last year, um, would you be able to relay that message to the commissioners from council again? Um, because if, if the county is running with surplus, it, they sh certainly shouldn't be too much of a burden for them to, to extend the discount period um, a small amount to make it, make it easier for the residents of Scranton. Uh, we'll be happy to forward your request to the commissioners. Yes. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I just wanted to add that, you know, it is, it is a tremendous and uh, welcome announcement that the county will not be levying a tax increase this year, uh, particularly since it has levied tax increases last year and the year prior to that. Um, I think last year might have been minimal, 4 or 5 percent, and the previous year, um, 48%? 40, 48%. So. 43? Uh, it 
It was high. <laughs> it was very high. And so, you know, with the additional four or five, it's pushing a 50% tax increase. So, you know, the fact that there is none this year is certainly appreciated. But I think it's also important to note that the commissioners also turned away from pursuing payments in lieu of taxes from large nonprofits in a joint effort among the city, the school district, and themselves. They also turned away from the development of a health care consortium among the city, the school district, and the county. So, uh, you know, in as much as uh, they're now seeing a surplus, I could venture a guess that had they been cooperative with the other two governing bodies of our community, uh, much more money could have been saved on their part, adding to their surplus, and much money could have been saved and brought in for the city of Scranton, which remains distressed over 20 years now. So in the future, I hope that if the commissioners remain in office, they would reconsider their previous actions and um, move forward intergovernmentally with the other local bodies for the best interest of all the taxpayers. Is there anyone else that concludes our sign-in sheet Good evening, Dave Dobson. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, taxes pay. Okay. Uh, once again, I'd like to mention that in early November, it's time to vote. Inform yourself as who is the best candidate and get out there and vote. And I'd also like to note that many of the uh, schools in the area, students by Supreme Court decision are allowed to vote within Scranton uh, if they reside here um, during the school year. And uh, a few weeks ago, before the hoopla down in Washington, there was a, a big thing about taxes and tax exempts and uh, that certain political parties uh, minor political uh, uh, with uh, agendas of their own were given uh, a positive review as a nonprofit by the uh, by the government by the IRS and they were complaining about it but the 1958 or 1959 law states that they have to be exclusively public welfare. They cannot be uh, politically involved. Now the IRS turned around and said primarily. The law says exclusively. The uh, IRS regulation said primarily. So it opened up the door for all these political groups to start uh, using most of their money for political activities and the uh, very wealthy people that are uh, donating and in a tune of millions of dollars a year are uh, actually getting a tax break for it just as if they had given to a hospital or a church or something like that so it's time to get out and vote people and it's time to do a little reading and uh, inform yourself as to what's really going on uh, on the trash fees uh, I'd like to say once again we need better collection attempts and uh, I propose to a candidate for tax collector if they would be willing to uh, use the tax office, uh, the single tax office for collecting trash. And I think that's a pretty good idea. We have a total lack of coordination on this tax uh, or uh, uh, fee collection. And it's really out of line. I also read that some people have shown up with, uh, with uh, canceled checks, too. So they might even be in the paper unjustifiably. And uh, 
As far as a per bag fee, I'd like to note that we should go with cans instead of bags because they get torn up and ripped apart by cats and skunks and whatever. Uh, and uh, one of the problems with the per bag fee, if it's not taken, if it's not taken, uh, people start to push it onto their neighbor's lawns. I've had that happen in a per bag community. Uh, it was privatized trash, but the mayor and the policeman was actually over to my side of the house. It was a double house that I rented, and uh, the lady upstairs told them that it was our trash. So I'm very apprehensive about it not being taken because I don't need it on my lawn. And then, you know, whose responsibility is it from there? Mine. I don't want to pay for somebody else. I've had a couple of tires and so forth that I threw away or paid to have uh, rather uh, at tire shops, and they don't really want to take them. But, uh, and also, I'd like to note on recycling, uh, it's very, we're, we're doing a very poor job. I see a lot of cardboard. I see cans, aluminum cans, bottles plastic bottles. Uh, glass bottles have very little value, by the way. But uh, the aluminum and steel cans and cardboard and all of that. We just got a mailing from the county. I think I gave you a, a copy uh, a couple months ago. And it noted a whole bunch of other things that uh, they were adding to the recycling. And years back, we had a recycling officer, and apparently the job was never done. Uh, he was supposed to be patrolling for recycling it was way back. It might have been back when you were running, but somebody from the DPW was actually supposed to be going through the courts and checking to see if this recycling and issuing citations. Now, as far as the citations, I like to mention that I think it's like a couple hundred dollars, so that's way overboard, and we should make it like $25 or something, hit somebody with a, a small fine, and maybe it'll wise them up before they get hit royally. Because I, I, I'm not sure. Somebody once said it's like a $300 fine, so that's a lot of money. Uh, Golden Parrot, go, once it go, again goes to USIS, I'll make this quick. They do privatized background checks for the federal government, and they passed uh, people that eventually became murderers because they were hearing voices and so forth. That's what we get. How about making it a little cheaper for us and passing the defects along with it? Thank you, and have a good night. And don't forget the bok, bok, bok. Thank, Thank you. you. Let the record show that Councilman Joyce has joined the meeting. I just wanted to uh, say something before the next speaker. Uh, I apologize for being tardy to tonight's meeting. Um, I would have been here at 6 o'clock otherwise. Um, I received a phone call from uh, Mike Judge of CaseCon uh, discussing uh, the potential borrowing for the Supreme Court award among other issues and uh, the call went much longer than expected and I'll actually elaborate more during motions but I just wanted everyone to know that that's the reason why I'm here late tonight thank you okay Mr. yes um, the first thing I'd like to say here tonight is that um, you know I, I'd like to thank all the people who come here continually regardless of what kind of shape the city's in. And I'd also like to say that I appreciate people who put their name on the ballot, whether we agree with what they do or not, because they show a real genuine concern for our city, even though we may not always agree with everything that's done here. But, um, you know, the first thing I have here tonight is that, you know, the recovery plan, the budget, um, it's not a shot at anybody. Um, the court knew that it wasn't realistic. In my opinion, I think most people knew it wasn't realistic, and I think that most people knew we were going to fall short. And I think a major problem the city's having is, I think the Pennsylvania Economy League has proven that it can't steer this ship. And as long as we keep following them, 
we're not going anywhere because there's a lot of other communities in the same shape we're in. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see something really change here. And I think the city should take a gamble and sever its relationship with the PEL. Because what's this, what is the state going to do to us? Sanction us? Can it really get much worse? I mean, think about it. And the other thing is, for the state to come here and sanction us, when they used us for a guinea pig, FRAC 47, in, in regard to our city employees, I mean, I, I haven't seen good stewardship from them either, because they should have been trying to protect the city. And instead, they threw us in, the, they threw us in like a pack of wolves. So I mean, when you see where the city is, we don't only have one problem, we have multiple problems. And in order to determine what our problems really are, we need to get everybody's hands out of our pie. And we need to figure out what ingredients we need in this pie to right ourselves. Because everybody makes recommendations to us. And if they're the wrong recommendations, and we take them and we proceed to use them, and they're wrong, we hurt ourselves. And from what I've seen over the decades I've come here, I really don't have much faith in, in Harrisburg and, and the things they're telling us to do. And look, it's not as if we don't mis make mistakes here, because we do. But we're Scrantonians, and I think we should have more of a say about what's going on in our city than politicians in Harrisburg. And don't get me wrong, there's no disrespect for people who run for office. But I just think that when people from Scranton run for an office, they run for an office because hopefully love of community or concern for community. But when we have people from outside in Harrisburg and other places telling us what, I, what we should do, is that politics or is that concern for our community? And if, if this is the concern they've shown our community, then we're in bad shape. And if we're going to proceed again and take recommendations from the PEL, I don't see why we do it. Because this was the PEL, basically. This was, this was their plan. This is what they thought we should do. They had their own projections. Everything came out. They spoke in court. They gave their position. And look, at, I'm not saying that the city administration and council don't have a part to have played in that. But the problem is that you know everything is, well, if you don't do what we want you to do, then there's going to be repercussions. Well, how, much, how many more repercussions can we have? I mean, Bonton's getting ready to roll over and leave. The mall's in trouble. The community's in trouble. The neighborhoods are in trouble. I mean, uh, we can't, I mean, I appreciate the gentleman who comes here from the county today talking about no tax increase, and they've had tax increases before. But when we look at where our city is, we only have pain in front of ourselves and no solutions. And to go into court with another failed plan, and this isn't a shot at the mayor. His recovery plan when he first took office wasn't real. I stood here and said that. And some people in the community thought it was silliness. But you know, in, in reality, after all this time, and then the mayor is, is probably a, a, a fine gentleman, but the truth of the matter is it wasn't a plan and it didn't lead to recovery. We, we just need to really step back, tell Harrisburg to stay in Harrisburg. We need to tell the PEL to go back home. We need to come up with a plan. And Mr. Rogan, to be honest with you, look at I still think that you should be the finance chair. I still think that. I mean, and that isn't a shot at you. I just think that you've been on council a long time, and I think you have something to contribute. Um, you can't make everybody happy about everything, but you're the person that's going to inherit this city. I mean, Mr. McGough's got two years, Mr. Loscombe's got two years, and you're going to be here for four, and you've been here through these things. And look, at, I'm not going to condemn anybody, because I don't know what took place behind the scenes when everything was being put together. But you know what? I think you have something to contribute, and I think that you can show that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else? Oh, good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, citizen and taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, uh, First off, I would like to thank Mrs. Evans for the information that was provided regarding the, uh, the parking meter. Uh, I do have a few questions that I'll follow up with after I've had a little bit of time. Uh, 
And next, I would like to make an announcement that there will be the League of Women Voters will be holding two debates next week on Tuesday, October 22nd at 7 p.m. There will be a, a debate of the two candidates for Scranton City Mayor, um, Democrat Bill Courtright and Republican Jim Mulligan. It will be held at the Loyola Science Center, uh, room 133, at the University of Scranton, 204 Monroe Avenue. And the second debate will be the candidates for the Scranton School Board on Thursday, October 24th at 7 p.m. And uh, that will be in the Moskowitz Theater on the fourth floor of the DeNaples Center. And I urge everybody to come. Okay, um, two, quick question for, I guess, Mr. McGough and Mr. Loscom. Uh, are, are, all, are, are all of our uh, city-owned vehicles equipped with GPS? that tracking the DPW and the uh, I don't public so. safety? No. No? I have no idea. Okay, could you inquire? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rogan, I guess, or I'm sorry, Mr. Joyce. Um, yes. Next, last week you talked about a $5 million savings for um, refinancing the debt. Yes. Uh, Five million dollars savings from what? Um, basically, what would happen in a scoop out refinance if it were to happen is some of the debt service payments would be abated for 2014. So there's no savings, it's just non payment in one year. Um, yes, uh, some people may call it um, kicking the can down the road a little bit further. Uh, that may be a term that some people may use to describe it. Yeah, well, not in favor of that, that's for sure. Uh, back, Mr. Loscom, I have some more questions with respect to the award. Um, number one, how many people in the city, or maybe Mr. Joyce could answer this, how many uh, of the city employees uh, have a pension of 70% of their final pay? I, I don't know the answer to that off, off of my head. Um, as far as who's receiving what, uh, we, could, we could definitely ask that question and try to obtain the answer. Okay, I would appreciate that. Uh, and Mr. Loscom, you were correct uh, that, and, and uh, I guess it's, it's upsetting either way, but the the article that I referred to was from the uh, October 2nd uh, of this year, a pension and crisis article in the Scranton Times Tribune. And I would like to know how many, it says retirees are, will receive the pension, uh, will, will receive a portion of the uh, Supreme Court award are those retirees who retired during the period of 2002 through the award, or is that all retirees? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a combination. It's, it's a combination of those who retired under the agreement that they would receive any increase in retirement benefits, which doesn't apply to all firefighters. And that was stopped at a certain time, and it would apply to any firefighter that retired in that time period that the awards were. What, what years did that apply that any increase to active retirees would also apply to the retired uh, employees? I'm, I'm sorry. They, you said for a period of time it was that anybody, any retiree received an increase if the... Retirees that retired within certain years. But what I were those years? That's I, what I'm asking. Well, I, I don't oh. have them off the top oh. of my head, but I believe... I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they ended in sometime in the mid 80s, uh, maybe 87. Anyone that came on after that did not does not come under the old retirement plan, okay. where they and would automatically get increases like half of what the 
It's a portion. That's yeah, what I was going to ask. Is next is what is the portion that they receive? The portion of the retiree would receive that's under that uh, would be 50% uh, of an active firefighter. In other words, if, if an active firefighter received a 5% increase, the retiree would receive 2.5%. Okay, and how are we coming, determining how many people are affected by this award and? This is, I'm still, believe me, I'm still waiting for some information. Uh, it's not easy coming by altogether. Um, Where? And, okay. a, and a retirement aspect is a total, total different thing. That comes out of the pension. Doesn't come out of the act of uh, city pay, city budget, so. Who has the agree? Who has the with the court award? The that I could go and read it myself. The legal department, the law department, and the uh, human resources. Okay. 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 Thank you. And why are we now just finding out in October that there are two additional cases pending to increase the uh, maximum payout for the firefighters from 50 to 75? Which is 70 percent of their pay? Those, those are new cases, I believe. Those, those are something that, that were just proposed well, by the current firefighters as far as 70 percent. But when, when did that happen? We've never been told about that, to the best of my knowledge. I mean, I, I don't think I've missed a lot of meetings. within the last to, two months or so when it was put in the newspaper. Well, it's already at the Commonwealth Court, so they must have been through the local court, right? No, I believe they, I don't know how Before that worked. You don't go I think was, do you go directly? To, I mean, I don't know. I'm not Can a legal mind, but I believe part of that recovery plan, or part of the, the uh, agreement, there was some language in there. <clears throat> Again, you know, you would have to maybe speak to the city solicitor or, or the solicitor for a fire department on that, but it jumped to that aspect because of, of, of a prior award that mentioned mentioned that when the city was trying to fight this whole thing. Okay, because, I mean, I, I didn't think you went directly to the Commonwealth Court, Commonwealth Court, but, okay, I will be back next week, good Lord willing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Craig, I'm hoping that you might remember this particular um, circumstance. As uh, Ms. Schumacher was discussing pensions, uh, back in 2002, I recall that uh, quite a number of city employees were pushed out of their jobs. Well, prior to retirement age, or you know, if if they were close to it or whatever. Uh, there, but regardless, there were quite a number who left as soon as the new administration came in. Can you recall what was given to those uh, employees, former employees by this, this administration? I believe what people would have retired with is what they had bargained for at the time. The reason for a lot of people leaving was because there was a, a big fight on everyone's hands, if you want to call it a conflict, of what was going to happen with this administration's recovery plan, as Mr. Morgan re referred to. So it, as it was explained to all of us, if you could retire, you know, and you knew what you were going to get as an employee, having worked many, many years, and that was a good option for you, that would be something that would be in your best interest you don't know how this is going to play out after all these years and that was pretty much the reason I, I believe that most people left when they could I know in the clerical union that I was president of president of they actually offered a double pension which made the liability of the clerical pension soar we had a very low liability unfunded liability and it practically quadrupled quintupled by doing that and that was an incentive that they gave to people to leave which of course we're all paying for now but that's that was what that was the one you were thinking of yeah. yes that the double pension had been offered right. and, and then of so course they had a number of people right. took advantage of that they had non-union people piggyback on that because it's a non-uniform pension and so on and so on mm -hmm. and, and that was a not not a very fiscally responsible thing to do 
Thank you. Just to clarify that for Mrs. Schumacher, that didn't uh, affect the police or firefighters. That was strictly no. on the clerical and non or the non-uniform. Yeah. Right. But I, and I do believe if and this I'm so I'm going to apologize in advance if I don't have this correct. It's the Supreme Court award actually addressed the pension uh, the way it was written. So now it's remanded back to Commonwealth Court, if I have that correct. I don't think they start over again. It's not like it's a different path because it's in the award and back. That's in response to the 70% that, that she was right. discussing with the, right. because it was in that award. Right. So that's what brought it back forward. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Greg Hulse, uh, West Scranton resident and taxpayer. Um, I come to the program this evening to discuss some of the ways we can possibly get out of the current debacle this, this, that this city now finds itself in. I've heard some solutions, uh, some plausible, some not. And I won't state the obvious and list the many problems that the city does have. But I'm, I'm here to offer some solutions. The last time I stood here at this, po at this podium, was during the budget fight last year. Uh, and I offered some ideas that I thought the city needed to, uh, to get done to get the city back on track. And I'm glad to see that some of the suggestions I made, uh, is, uh, one of the things about the parking meters using debit cards was taken up and done. At that time, I also stated that we cannot tax our way out of the city and uh, out of this mess. And that the city, what this debt city needs is jobs. And I know everyone's gonna say, of course it does. We all know this. But how do, we get, how do we get there? How do we invite businesses and give them incentive to want to move their business to Scranton? As we all know, businesses are moving out. Um, well, I've come up with an idea to help solve this. Maybe it's plausible, maybe it's not. I hope it's the, the first. Uh, we all know businesses need incentive to move here to Scranton. Well, let's give them one. I would propose a plan that gives businesses a tax credit for every full-time employee they hire. And I'd offer, give them like $3,500 off their property tax, mercantile, mercantile tax, or something that we can give them that, that could be negotiated between council and business leaders in the city. Furthermore, I'd give them $3,500 for every Scranton resident they hire and a $2,500 tax credit for anyone they hire outside the city, from Dunmore, uh, Old Forge, what, what have you. It, it puts putting people back to work, it's putting people to work in the city, and it, we're getting a wage tax out of this. We're getting something. It's a win-win for everybody. And I think that's what the city needs, a win-win. I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing about us losing all the time. Let's win something. Uh, the businesses get a break. You know, They get lower taxes. There are so many uh, businesses that I've talked to that are paying outrageous property taxes. You know, and we're getting an influx of wage taxes and, and maybe they'll move to Scranton. There's, we all, as we know, there's a lot of empty buildings and a lot of empty homes in the city. Um, we do not need more taxes. We just need, to, we need to prioritize and budget wisely. I don't agree with the 1% tax on University of Scranton students. We gotta get real. We're basically punishing students because we feel that the university isn't paying their fair share. That's the way I see it. And while I somewhat agree that they don't, I think this is not the way to get money from the university. It's like a de facto tax against the university that, ha that hurts their students. It will just alienate further this university toward the city. Uh, like it or not, it's state law that protects them as a nonprofit. You're gonna have to go to court to fight it. And frankly, we don't have the money to fight it. So why take, as Mr. Miller says, why take the risk? I call it a gamble. Well, we, we, can't, we can't afford gambling, okay? We're, we're, we're nearly broke. If I, had, if I was on my last $100 and I'm going to the casino and I needed to go to uh, buy groceries or the casino, well, I'm not gonna go to the casino and bet on red. You know, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna budget and buy groceries. Budget wisely. Use the money wisely. Do I look at it as an investor. I invest and I look at it as an investor's point of view. The investor, in this case, is the University of Scranton. 
We were asking them to invest in a company which is the city. They have a C they, we have a bad CEO as the mayor and a dysfunctional board of directors, the city council. Well, why would any investor in their right mind want to invest in a company that is run in the manner we've been running the city the last few years? You know, but that's what we're asking the University of Scranton to do, invest in us. I wouldn't do it as an investor, and I'm sure that's what they're thinking as well. Uh, don't you, uh, and my, I've talked to business leaders, and I've talked to people at the university. They, they want to invest, they want to invest in the city, but they want our fiscal house in order first. And we have to give them credible ideas rather than overtaxing the people as a solution. Furthermore, to promote growth and to incentivize new businesses to move here, uh, I know people don't like the KOZ, but we, if we gave new businesses a KOZ zone for seven years but run properly, I think this is a way to help invite businesses into the city. And here's how I do it. You give them a KOZ for seven years. They have to pay. Uh, they, they have seven, a seven-year uh, break. If they don't own the land and deed to their property and the, and the building they built, they owe all the back taxes for those seven years. They decide to move out of the city after their seven year. They have, they're responsible for the demolition of that building they put there. Because we all know selling a, a vacant building that's 30, 40,000 square feet is nearly impossible. Thank you. I, I know I ran over my time. So thank you very much. And I hope you take these proposals seriously. Thank, thank you. you. Chrissy, no hat tonight, huh? Uh -oh. <laughs> well, this week, what do you think, Frank? What's the after this week? What do you think, Frank? What do you uh, think, Frank? I think Westside's going to win. I'm going to West. I'm going after all the way, Frank. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good luck, Saturday, guys. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chrissy. Thanks, Chrissy. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Uh, actually, I'd just like to uh, thank people for their well wishes during my recent infirmity. Um, feeling better, and uh, again, thank you. And uh, that's all. Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, two brief comments. Um, the first one regarding the delinquent garbage fees that were posted in the paper um, and I talked a little bit about changing how the city collects garbage fees last night by switching to a per bag fee and I think the reason why you see so many people that aren't paying their garbage fee is because the one bill in this entire city if you don't pay it you still get the service and that's the garbage fee um, these people who've been delinquent for five, ten years, their garbage has still been picked up every day. And I've had a lot of residents that have called me with different ideas on how to address that problem. One is um, going to the per bag fee. The other is having some sort of, sort of sticker that you place on your garbage cans, and you can only use cans to show that you paid your fee. Um, be you know just a small sticker, just like. Um, you know, a lot of neighborhoods have when they have permit parking that you would put in your car. And that would prove to the garbage collectors that you paid your fee. And if you don't pay the fee, your garbage shouldn't get picked up. And the per bag fee would accomplish that. Um, some sort of um, a sticker system could accomplish that as well. And the other thing, and it was mentioned here from the podium as well, that these changes would encourage is, is more recycling. And recycling really is a win for the city because every can and bottle that's recycled instead of put in a garbage can, that's less tonnage that we have to pay at the landfill. And not only is it good for the environment, that's the added bonus, but the savings that we have at the dump would be astronomical if everything that can be recycled in the city is. Um, as was mentioned before, the, the county is and they should continue to expand the recycling program to accept more items if it could be done in an economical fashion. Um, we see, and they're entrepreneurs, I guess, or scrap men that you see going through the neighborhood grabbing different things that can be brought to the scrapyard. And there's no reason that, that the county can't take those items as well because a profit actually can be turned on them. So I, I definitely think when we look at 
garbage fees in the city, I think we need to start from scratch, figure out the exact cost of garbage collection and the disposal of the garbage, which would be the, the tipping fees at the dump. And you average that out to either do a fee based on how much it costs per household or how much it costs per bag. And everyone should pay their fair share on garbage collection. If people aren't paying for their garbage to be picked up, their garbage shouldn't be picked up and they should be cited by the city. Um, the, the free ride for, for some of these individuals has to end. And it was a good point raised by a couple speakers, and I know Mrs. Evans chimed in on it as well, that it's not only the taxpayer's fault. There's some people that I know for a fact didn't receive these bills or people that bought houses that had backed garbage fees when they purchased the house. The city needs to be more proactive in getting these payments and putting them in the paper to try to embarrass them or, or notify them to pay is a good first step. But we have to focus on the delinquencies to get the people who aren't paying to pay, and we need to reform the entire system so that it's made to be a fair and equitable situation for everyone in the city of Scranton. Personally, I don't believe that the single widow who has maybe one bag of garbage a week should pay the same fee as the family of 12 that may have 10 or 15 bags a week. So that's definitely something I think we should look at. Refinancing was brought up, and I know I discussed this with Councilman McGough last week, um, and Mr. Joyce and a couple other speakers mentioned it before. I would support refinancing if it were to be a lower rate and a lower cost over the entire portion of the refinance. But taking a one-year scoop out or, or whatever you want to call it where we would be paying less for one year but our rate would go up and we would be paying more overall is something that I would oppose. So depending how that was would be structured is whether I would support or oppose it. Um, I, I, I find it very hard to believe and it would be great if we could that the city could refinance any of our debt at a lower rate than we're already paying. Um, not only has the city's credit rating and credit worthiness been hurt um, in the media and in the banking community, but the interest rates in general um, have increased. Um, I, I purchased my home in December at a rate of 3.25. It's now 4.25. So they've increased the full percent in less than a year for, and that's at a much lower level when you're talking residential loans. So I think we, we can't be short-sighted um, regarding refinancing or any other items that, that could be proposed, but it's definitely a discussion that, that we need to have, and if those proposals come in and they would save the city in the long run, that's definitely um, something um, that we should consider. And um, I'll comment on a couple other items on the towing um, when they come up. Mrs. Evans, I, yes. I know I did said I wouldn't, that I didn't have anything to say, but just a, a response to the uh, um, refuse collections and uh, the fee. Um, it, it, as far as, first of all, just because, be, because somebody doesn't pay the garbage fee, I wouldn't want, if that were my neighbor, I wouldn't want their garbage not picked up. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can continue, discontinue the service because someone doesn't pay the fee. Um, that affects not only them, but it affects an entire neighborhood. The, the problem has been, obviously, the collection of the fee. If we're going to change anything, uh, it, it should be in the way in, the, the way in which the, the fee is collected and enforcement of it, um, whether it is through citations and all um, for not paying, but um, any change or any, any program or any idea that would in some way discontinue service to anyone, um, I think would be a detriment to the entire community. Just to rebut for a <laughs> second, if you look at every single bill as an individual or, or as a city or if you ask anyone, if, if you don't pay your bill, you stop getting the service eventually. But the garbage fee in the city of Scranton is the one thing that people have gone over a decade without paying and it's still received the service. And I do agree that we can't just let garbage pile up on the streets. That certainly can't happen. But if it gets to the point where somebody's refusing to pay and they continue to put garbage on the lawn, they should be cited. If they don't respond to the citation, the home should be condemned. And, and that could be 
you know, it could be the repercussions. And if somebody's facing that as the penalty, I think they would pay their garbage fee instead of, instead of letting it pile up. But it's, th there's a lot of different ideas and it's definitely a discussion I think we should all have as, as a group. That's all. <laughs> And Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, just briefly. <laughs> and not to beat a dead horse, but this is on the garbage fees also. <laughs> uh, a lot has been discussed here, a lot of ideas have been presented and, and all valid. Um, that list came out, I think we're on the right path to finally pursuing the collections on, on the garbage fees. Um, there have been some mistakes and, and, and there's really no one to blame. Uh, it's been a combination of different things. I've done some research myself. I was, uh, I had an inquiry uh, about a, a fee that was paid for 2009. And first thing I want to say is you could go to the treasurer's office downstairs and there's representatives from Northeast Revenue that collect, that are collecting the prior year's tax, or prior year's uh, garbage fees current year's garbage fees are directed right to the treasury, through the treasurer's office. Some of the mistakes I've seen have been the past due payments have been sent on the current address to the treasurer's office and placed in their account. So it's a matter of them taking a few weeks to have to get the, the debits and, and all that straightened out. So that happened to be this particular case I looked at. They had a canceled check and everything, but it was sent to the city treasurer's account and deposited there. Now, Northeast Revenue has to wait to get it back and, and to credit this particular, but it's in the process. But, you know, the, the representatives from Northeast Revenue are down there. They're not, they didn't put the names in the paper. They didn't do this. All I ask is, is that if you get down there and you were wrongly put in the paper or even if you have any kind of ill will, don't take it out on the representatives. They're just there to do their job. And I found them very helpful <clears throat> and very courteous to everyone that's been there. They'll bend over backwards to try and look up what the problem is. Uh, as was the case several years ago, there are some bad records out there. And, and I think Mrs. Evans mentioned the prior uh, collector. So it was a tough job for Northeast Revenue to try and come up with the current list. And I think they've done a good job. Uh, several issues, like, like Mr. Rogan stated, someone purchasing a home that may have garbage fees owed on it for years and not knowing about it till after they purchased it. Perhaps we could do like the sewer authority does and put a lien on if there's a garbage fee over a certain amount. And if someone is purchasing that house, that lien shows up. So that has to be taken out at closing. Maybe we could look at something like that to alleviate those problems. And there's been situations in a few instances where homes have been converted. Maybe it was a double home where the parents lived on one side and that, and the parents have, have moved on or passed away, and the individuals have converted it to a single home to raise their children and expand, and they're still being listed as multiple dwellings in that. And, it, you know, with the proof that the home has been converted, with the meters, all that stuff, utility bills, um, I believe Northeast Revenue will be willing to work with them on those aspects also. So there's a lot of resolutions here, but you know, it is shocking to see the amount of money out there that's owed and, and for how long it's been, especially for some individuals. I, I don't know how, you know, some of them have gotten away with this so long. But um, just bear with it, and, and I hope we're on the right path now to, you know, keeping up to date with this stuff. I think in the, in the past couple of years, you've seen our efforts to generate revenue by doing different things are finally starting to come to fruition. <laughs> it's been an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. In the city, if they kept their eyes and ears open years ago, I don't believe would have been in this bad of a position at this time. So um, we've all done our part to try and alleviate any of these problems so it doesn't fall on the back of the taxpayers because that's what falls on. If we can't pay our bills because other people don't pay theirs, that's what happens. And uh, you know, I, just to go off on a tangent, uh, Mr. Hulse, I believe it was, mentioned about the university and, 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 and stuff like that. Well, I believe, 
I, I look at it this way. If I was living in a home free of charge, and I say, say I had a uh, barber shop or whatever, and the doors were falling off the barber shop, it's not too appealing to bring customers in. If I was in that position that I was so embarrassed and trying to bring people in, I would try to help the person that owned the property since I'm there tax free. That's, that's the way I look at it. I know people look at it differently. But, uh, you know, at this point in time, the city is hurting and we're hosting a lot of these nonprofits and we're not asking for a permanent commitment. We've asked legitimately for a temporary commitment and yet we haven't had a conversation come back from basically anybody. And that, that's all I'm saying. The doors are open, the windows are open, I'm happy to, and again, uh, I've got family members that have been big contributors to the university. I've got family members that have been great, have great jobs as students graduating from the university. But, uh, you know, all we're asking for is a little bit of help. And not just the university, but I understand, and, and everyone has a different idea on that. But I just had to throw that out. Thank you. And thank you. Mr. Vasco, Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions tonight? I do. Um, first, I'll, uh, well, I'm going to address a few things tonight. Uh, one, uh, I'm going to address the budget a little bit. Uh, two, I'm going to address uh, the borrowing for the Supreme Court Award, MMO, possible refinancing. And uh, three, uh, uh, Mr. Rogan brought up a, a very good uh, issue about trash fees in the city. And I, I, I did want to add some comments to that as well. Um, first of all, the budget. Um, I uh, did call the mayor's office today, and uh, I tried to reach Mayor Doherty. Uh, he, I believe at the time I called, he was a little tied up, or he was out of the office. But I spoke to the secretary in the office, and what I plan to do is meet with Mayor Doherty, hopefully next week, to discuss the budget more. Um, maybe exchange uh, ideas or, or reinforce ideas that have been provided by uh, myself and see exactly where the administration is. So uh, I, I was looking to have that meeting on uh, a Wednesday, well, I don't want to say between the afternoon and evening hours, possibly like about 4 o'clock. Um, so that's pretty much where I will, or where I'll stop with that. Um, as far as uh, borrowing for the Supreme Court Award and um, the MMO this year and the possibility of refinancing debt, I did receive a call from Mike Judge of CaseCon and I spoke to him for quite some time uh, this afternoon after work and uh, actually it, it drug out into a long conversation that actually made me a little tardy for tonight's meeting. But basically we have um, some lenders in the picture. Uh, uh, Janie Montgomery Scott obviously is waiting to see the budget and, and what comes out. Uh, we have another lender uh, that CaseCon is looking at that's sort of uh, a little silent right now. And we have another lender that is interested and they are in the phase of gathering information and evaluating information. Uh, some of uh, the information that they're gathering uh, are, are explanations of things uh, such as uh, tax rates, etc what might possibly be done in the future. They're looking at our cash flows. They're looking at our pension system. They're looking at uh, the debt that we currently have in the city. Uh, so those are all things that are being taken into consideration. I know that Mr. Judge from CaseCon is working very diligently. I usually speak to him about 
oh, twice a week, and sometimes I bother him for updates because this is something I want to see get completed sooner than later. Uh, hopefully, by the time I am off of council, there will be at least something in place to pay the arbitration award that we owe, as well as cover the uh, borrowing for the MMO this year, so it's not carried over into next year. And that's very important because that's another um, uh, five plus million dollars. Now, as far as refinancing, um, you know, obviously there's uh, a possibility that uh, we could refinance debt at the same interest rate, a lower interest rate, or a higher interest rate. There's, there's only three choices. I'm looking at a possibility of a scoop out refinance. Now, that would abate some of our debt service payment uh, for 2014. If it's possible, it will be done. If it's not possible, if the, if the, if the uh, lending community does not like Scranton's financial position and they feel that it's too weak, then it, then it won't be done. But if you don't favor refinancing or, or a scoop out, that leaves very little options to explore as how to replace that revenue or save that money or generate the excess $5 million in revenue. So um, the only options we have been provided that we know are legal are property tax increases or wage tax increases or refuse fee increases or uh, fees or, or additional um, permit increases, or you could increase the real estate transfer tax, all things that we don't want to do, or um, we want to limit. So just saying, if you don't favor that, you have to come up with $5 million more. And as far as garbage fees, I think uh, Councilman Rogan brought forth a very interesting idea. And um, we do have a problem in this city with the collection of refuse fees. It's very evident. When there's 15 pages of non-payers in the Scranton Times, it's, it's very evident that there's definitely a major issue with collecting the fee. Now, I, I, I've noticed, you know, I've, I've, tra I've been trying to look at what other communities are doing to see uh, what could possibly be done in Scranton. Uh, obviously, there's the flat fee rate, which we currently have. There's a, the, uh, the uh, option of a per bag charge. Uh, there's the option of uh, some communities actually sell garbage bags that uh, residents purchase, which I, I'm not sure how you would implement that in Scranton. But um, I, I think um, Mr. Rogan brought forth some very valid points. And, you know, the, the thing I worry about, is it too late to actually enact something like that because with the change of a system of how you're doing something comes the implementation of it. How do you actually do it? How do you change this system? How do we convert to a per bag fee? Uh, and, and I've seen uh, an interesting thing would be to uh, maybe uh, require uh, the garbage fee to be paid by a certain date and if it's not paid by a certain date or when you pay or when you pay the garbage fee maybe the city issues a sticker that you place in your window to ensure that you have paid the fee and then if you don't pay the fee obviously you wouldn't get the sticker and then maybe a fine could be imposed but it would be interesting um, I would encourage more 
discussion with uh, Mr. Dewar from the Department of Public Works, possibly, and the business administrator uh, from Mr. Rogan, because I think it's it's a very it's a very valid idea. It's it's something that may be able to work. Um, while we're on the subject of trash fees, Northeast Revenue, uh, who collects our delinquent trash fees, had, has sent us a report uh, for the period ending September 30th. So uh, for the month of September, Northeast Revenue um, collected $54,329 in delinquent trash fees from the years of 1999 to 2012. Uh, their fee for collection was $8,561 and change. So the city received $48,516 from that. And uh, ref delinquent refuse fees that are uh, more than uh, one year uh, past due, uh, Northeast Revenue, as we know, also collects. Uh, during the month of September to report, they collected 39,26087. So uh, I would like to, to commend Northeast Revenue for continuing to do an admirable job in collecting delinquent taxes and delinquent refuse fees and um, going after the non-payers. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. In response to City Council's request for an evaluation of water runoff problems on Augusta Avenue, Lemon Street, Gaston Place, and North Main Avenue, <clears throat> and for a meeting among the city engineers, Scranton Sewer Authority representatives, Johnson College representatives, and homeowners, Johnson College provided the following letters, which it asked that I read aloud. <clears throat> Dear Mrs. Craik and members of Scranton City Council, Johnson College would be happy to meet to discuss a solution to the water issues occurring in our neighborhood. The college has been dealing with the same water issues on our property for many years. Our concern is just as strong as our neighbors in finding a solution to the stormwater problem impacting our campus along with our neighbors' properties. Johnson is dedicated to finding a reasonable solution to this issue. The college has hosted several meetings with our neighbors to try to remedy and or alleviate some of the problem. Here are the recent meetings that have occurred with residents of Augusta Avenue, Lemon Street, and Gaston Place, as well as other meetings we have been uh, part of in relation to the new building and the water issues. Uh, June 2011, a pre-meeting with neighbors prior to beginning the construction on the new building in question, which is the Health Science Technology Center. The college's maintenance supervisor, Mr. Bill Kelly, was in attendance, as well as Mr. Joseph Durkin, an engineer from Riley Associates. 2011 and 2012, Mr. and Mrs. Doug Evans kept in contact with Ms. Leonard, senior vice president of college advancement, and Mr. Kelly on the water issues. The college also heard from and worked with Mrs. Adele Snyder, another neighbor on the water issues. September 2012, a letter was sent to Mark Dewar, director of the city's DPW, expressing concerns about the water. In September, October 2012, Mr. Dewar met with Mr. Kelly from Johnson College. Also in October 2012, the college organized another meeting with the neighbors to discuss the water issues. Mr. Dewar was invited to this meeting but unfortunately couldn't attend. Mr. Durkin was in attendance, however, to discuss the issue. Um, in November 2012, the college installed curbing for one of its neighbors, Mrs. Adele Snyder, at 3227 North Main Avenue to try to help in the management of the water that was affecting her property. Uh, in the summer of 2013, Mr. Kelly and Ms. Leonard met with Mr. and Mrs. Evans again to further discuss the water issues. And in October 2013, the college worked 
with Mr. Evans to organize another meeting of the neighbors to discuss these same issues. And at this meeting, Mr. Kelly and Ms. Leonard explained the bigger issues at play, reiterated how it was still impacting the college's property too, and offered to provide more curbing which could help neighbors. Everyone seemed to agree that the curbing was only a temporary solution and the neighbors declined the college's offer. It was agreed at this meeting that the next step would be to have another meeting and include someone from the city and Mr. Larry West from Senator Blake's office. And Ms. Leonard was in the process of trying to schedule this meeting when she heard from Scranton City Council. Johnson will move forward with organizing the meeting between the sewer authority, the city engineer, and the affected residents. Uh, they were in the process of getting dates from Mr. Potius, the city engineer, so that a meeting could be scheduled as soon as possible and the college would be happy to report back the findings from the meeting to Scranton City Council. They also enclosed uh, a letter that was sent in 2012 to Mr. Dewar about this same issue. Um, Dear Mr. Dewar, I would like to bring some information to your attention that I have become aware of since the addition of Johnson College's newest building to campus, the Health Science Tech Center. The new building is located toward the rear of the campus, close to Lemon Street, and therefore we have been keeping in close contact with our neighbors in that area regarding all aspects of the project. In conversations with a few of the neighbors, we discuss some water runoff issues that we think the city of Scranton should be made aware of. And they are, when it rains hard, a few of the neighbors get a lot of water in their yards. And we also found that there is an area of a drainage pipe that is broken, which may be contributing to the water buildup issue on Lemon Street. Uh, silt sediment gathered due to this break and the college is going to be cleaning out this area and repairing the break through the area of the pipe that is causing this buildup. The larger issue is the fact that there are no storm drains in this part of Scranton and therefore no place for any of the water runoff to go except in the different properties in this area. Now, uh, in addition, Ms. Uh, Leonard notified us that the requested meeting will be conducted on October 23rd, 2013 at 10 a.m. in Johnson College's Richmond Hall, Classroom 200. And I look forward to receipt of the minutes of that meeting to determine if the homeowner's water runoff problems are being addressed. Uh, next, a few weeks ago, I received the results of the tax assessor's hearing of the appeal of real estate taxes for two properties assessed to the Scranton Parking Authority. The former Molly Brannigan's assessment of 74000 was reduced by 12000 to $62,000. When multiplied by the millage for improvement only, taxes decreased from $1,898.54 to $1,590.67. In addition, NovaCare's assessment of $52,000 was reduced by $12,000 to $40,000. In terms of improvement only, taxes dropped from $1,334.11 to $1,026.24. In order to determine the amount of tax revenue lost because of the approximate 30 Scranton businesses that filed appeals of real estate taxes in October 2013, I asked Mrs. Craig to contact the tax assessor's office to obtain the appropriate information and correct figures. And upon receipt of that information, I'll report it to the public. Uh, next. The League of Women Voters mayoral and school board debates, as well as recent candidate interviews, will be broadcast by ECTV on Channel 19 throughout the coming weeks leading up to General Election Day, November 5th. 
And finally, I have one citizen's request tonight. City residents again ask for the paving of Kane Street. And that's it. 5B, ratifying and approving of the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton on behalf of Community Life Support Incorporated to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, acting through the Commonwealth Financing Authority for a local share account grant pursuant to the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act in the amount of $325,474 for the project to be known as Neonatal Transportation Project located in Scranton, Pennsylvania authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept the grant. If successful and execute and enter into a local share account grant contract and commitment letter with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to accept and utilize the grant in the amount of $325,474 awarded by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for such project. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, ratifying and approving of the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton on behalf of the Scranton Sewer Authority to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, acting through the Commonwealth Financing Authority for a local share account grant pursuant to the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act in the amount of $415,695 for the project to be known as Street Sweeper Project, located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. This resolution shall also authorize the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept the grant if approved and execute and enter into a local share account grant, contract and commitment letter with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to accept and utilize the grant awarded by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for such project. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Um, this $415,695 thousand or six hundred and ninety five dollar proposed grant will be used for the purchase of two sweet sweet two street sweepers one for the city of Scranton one for the borough of Dunmore uh, as I perused uh, the application and its line items I noticed that of that let's say $416,000, $24,000 um, was plugged in for OECD, for the administration of the grant and follow-up. And so uh, I'm certainly wondering if each time uh, OECD is handling uh, these grant situations for whatever entities, if they're receiving a fee to yeah. do so. And especially in this scenario where only half of the grant directly benefits the residents of Scranton. Yes. And we're using, even though it's federal tax dollars, it's still our tax dollars. And that money, if we could reduce the administration, would be more money available for other programs. Um, or I'm thinking that that's exactly it within the CDBG. Yeah. If we could maybe take a look at how many fees OECD, let's say, has received in the last year or two from the projects that uh, it becomes involved with. I think that could give council a good idea of by what number their administration allocation can be reduced. Absolutely, and um, just so we can get some more information in writing from Ms. Abley, um, Mrs. Craig, could we please send a request, that request um, that Mrs. Evans mentioned, asking how often this practice occurs um, and, and why it occurs. Uh, 
Um, all those in favor of introductions signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes <coughs> have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A. Reading by title, file of council number 50, 2013, an ordinance. Repealing file of council number 37 of 2011 as amended, entitled, establishing the list of authorized towing companies for the city of Scranton and establishing the rules, qualifications, and standards to be followed by all said towing companies, establishing fines and penalties for towing and fees related to this ordinance by establishing the list of authorized towing companies for the city of Scranton, establishing the rules, qualifications, and standards to be followed by all said towing companies, establishing fines and penalties for towing and fees related to this ordinance, and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to enter into a 10-year contract for towing and related services in the city of Scranton in exchange for a one-time payment of $300,000. I would like to make a motion to amend item 6A for the following. I make a motion to amend item 6A, file of council number 50, 2013, in the last line of the summary title, after the word dollars, insert the following. To be credited to line item 01.331.33165, towing slash storage fees in accordance with the ordinance file of council number 50, 2013, as amended. Uh, we have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. On the question? Uh, I was going to say just an explanation of what it, what it changes. Would you like to address that, uh, Solicitor Hughes? Sure, Madam President. Uh, when the legislation originally came down from the solicitor's office, it <coughs> stated that the $300,000 would go into a special account to purchase police cars. I looked it over, and it was, first of all, I thought that there were two, that there were two items in the title, when by the Home Rule Charter there could only be one item in the title and it's a separate legislation that during the next 10 years as fees are increased the city of scranton is going to get a portion of the increase of the fees as, as, as the revenue i wrote back to solicitor kelly and told him that and that not only that but that in accordance with this year's budget that the three hundred thousand uh, dollars on this contract was a revenue source by a specific line item, and as the line item is stated there. Um, the legislation was then sent back without um, the statement in there that it would go into the special account to purchase police cars. However, in subsequent emails, um, their intent was that he still thought that this would go into purchase police cars and not into the operating budget. Um, I don't want any problem with this. This is a revenue line item in this year's budget for $300,000. And I want it specifically stated, even though it's not in the ordinance is sent down, but it's only in the fourth whereas clause. So I just want to clear it up. They do have the check. And I told them they should put the check in his escrow account until it is passed, but then I received an email and they put it into the account temporarily to purchase the police cars uh, until the legislation is passed. Um, that's why I want this to be specifically stated that this money, this $300,000, is going to go into this year's operating budget. And that any future monies that will come in over the next 10 years will go into the special account to purchase police cars. Thank you. So in layman's terms, all this does is appropriates where the funds go. It doesn't change anything with the contract. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's good layman's terms. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 
You've heard reading by title of item 6A as amended. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A as amended pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes, very briefly. Um, as I stated last week, um, I've begun reaching out to many of the tow truck operators that are listed um, on the contract. I believe there are 15 of them. I know I haven't gotten to, to all 15 yet, um, but from speaking to them for the most part, they seem pleased with the deal that it, um, they're helping the city, they're helping the city a lot by, by doing this. We certainly thank them for, for that, for filling the $300,000 um, gap that was in the budget. And in return, they receive a, a longer term contract, which keeps the towing list at a, a, at a set amount, um, which is something I, which two items that I support. And I just wanted to stress again, because a couple of people did mention um, residents that, that I spoke to, that this doesn't affect your towing if you're calling a tow truck for a private tow, or even if you're in an accident and you're able to request a specific company, you could still do that. This is only for the instance when um, the person doesn't either doesn't want a specific company or if it's an abandoned vehicle, um, accidents where the person is maybe taken to the hospital and they're unable to, to make that kind of request. So that's all that this affects. It doesn't change me calling you know my favorite tow company um, to have them come and fix my car when I get a flat tire. So I just wanted to clear that up. Is there anyone else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, file of council number 49, 2013, sale of tax delinquent property at the corner of Linden Street and Taylor Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, to Linden Taylor, LLC, 56 Ledge Drive, Lakeville, Pennsylvania, 18438, for the sum of $2,500. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. Um, I know last week I had mentioned uh, an idea that was proposed by our solicitor concerning um, the sale of many of these um, properties on which homes have been demolished and, and frankly are too small uh, on which to construct a new home. And uh, our solicitor had proposed uh, contacting residents who live on both sides of those properties, if indeed there are two, if not one, and um, giving them these properties rather than uh, selling the properties. Or, you know, if, if it were legally necessary, um, maybe a, a charge of a dollar could be made. But in so doing, um, we have so many residents who are already maintaining those properties since they are you know, directly adjacent to their own and they want to enhance their own neighborhood. And um, it would also return those properties to the tax rolls. So uh, that, I think, is an idea that merits further investigation and, and something I think that could work very well for uh, residents and the city. And uh, maybe when, <laughs> when our solicitor clones himself, <laughs> his body double, <laughs> I'm sorry can look into that because I, I do think that was an excellent suggestion, Attorney Hughes. Well, I, th you know, I want to thank you, but the, you know, the problem with this is that many of these lots are very narrow. They're, they're the old type development in, in urban, uh, urban development. You know, they could be 40 feet wide. 
100, 150 feet deep, which was the standard size lot, you know, back in the early 1900s all the way up through the 40s. And, you know, right now that where they've, they have huge tax delinquencies on them, there's probably a demolition lien against them, and they're never going to be sold. Who's going to buy them and put up, you know, and come through like the, you know, with, with the last one here under the Pittsburgh plan? And you know, come back, make a make an offer, um, and then put a house up on them because it's not conducive to, you know, modern development. And just driving around the city, you know, you look at them and you think that that if you could just give them away, you know, to a budding landowner, and if there's two of them, you could split them in half, and each one would have half of the lot, um, put it back on the tax rolls, and then. They could maybe expand their house or put up some other type of improvement, and they're just laying there fallow. And you know, you drive throughout the city and you see quite a few of them. And I think this would be an idea that that you know we're never going to get any revenue out of them. They're really a liability from the standpoint that you know, even though the city has tax title to them, uh, that we're never going to be able to uh, really sell them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if we look into it some way, that that it might be a way to get property right now that's totally unproductive back onto the tax rolls and maybe even add to some development in the city. Somebody could put a, you know, an addition on their house or some other type of improvement. I'll definitely take a look at it. Thank you. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.